Hi folks, Matt Young here from the Quality Sport Hub, and today I'm going to talk about athlete development. What can we do to maximize the quality sport experience for our athletes? And as you can see here, there are five pillars that contribute to athlete development. Uh, let's start with the first pillar, which is competence. So competence is physical competence, speed, strength, endurance, power, and then the technical, tactical competence of the skill set running, jumping, dribbling, stick handling, all those technical, tactical aspects that go into the athlete's development. That's one pillar. The second pillar is confidence. And in confidence, we're talking about things like self-belief, performance under pressure, resilience, self-worth, things like mental readiness and trust in training. Really, really key for the athletes to really buy into that and understand how they can take that to the next level. Third pillar is the character. And inside the character, we're talking about things like decision-making, game sense, work ethic, leadership, positive self-talk, goal setting, positive attitude, dealing with setbacks and being self-motivated. Those are just a few of the qualifiers that go into the character development of the athlete. Let's move on to connection, which is the social emotional realm, understanding things like nutrition, sleep, social media, relationships with teammates, linking actions to consequences, doing what's right, conflict resolution, having fun playing, and developing self-esteem. And then the last one, the pillar that we've added in is culture. So how does the culture of the organization really embody the competence, confidence, character, and connection as important pillars? What is the priority? Now, most people focus and coaches and organizations focus 100% of their time on the competence sphere. And so that is 100% of the time in the confidence sphere. But let's be honest, if we're not baselining an athlete's technical, tactical, or physical acumen at the beginning of the season and then reevaluating it mid-season, sharing that information with the athlete and using that information to guide the practice, we can't say that we are all about athlete development. And even if we do say that, it's only 20% of the big picture. So again, if, if we're being sold athlete development and we're not doing the basics of baselining, reevaluating, sharing that information to help guide practice, we need to rethink what we're stating in terms of athlete development. Because what we're really doing is we're using the schedule, the score, and the standings as the measure of athlete development. So parents and athletes and, and the general population will think, well, they're first all the time, so they must be really good at athlete development. Well, that's not necessarily the case, number one. And number two, there's only room for a couple people at the top of that ladder. So it is misleading. We gotta move away from the schedule, the score, and the standings as a basis for athlete development. So what do we do? We've gotta include the character, the connection, the confidence, and the culture in that play. And again, each one of these spheres must also be baselined, reevaluating it, sharing with the athlete, and, to, and using that to help guide athlete development to help lead to quality sport experiences. Now, statistically speaking, what we know, we know that 90% of athletes that play sport in high school will not play sport and at the varsity level, 90%. So we have to ask ourselves, what is important? What is the most important thing we can do to create quality human beings? Because even if they, these people go on and compete at the varsity level, and then hopefully even as high as they want at a professional or semi-professional level, sport has a ceiling. There is a timeline on sport. You cannot play sport forever. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that's most important for the majority? The minority will take care of themselves because they're probably self-motivated, they'll have a lot of support, they'll be driven, and they'll be plugged into different things that can help them cope. But for the majority, we have to ask ourselves, is it the athlete first or is it creating a quality human first? And that's where we can stand to really open up this Pandora's box and understand the components, and how do we measure, track, record, and report, and use things like confidence, competence, character, and culture, and connection to, to fulfill and really round out the whole athlete development profile. So great coaches 
will factor in the confidence, the character, the connection, and the culture. We read about them all the time. How did that coach motivate his or her team to be such great ambassadors and great people? How do they keep that winning culture all the time? And if you dig deep and peel back the layers of the onion, what you'll find more times than not is they are really diving into and including this holistic development model. So quick and dirty, people ask all the time, this is what quality athlete development entails. It's what it looks like. If you're not being baselined, reevaluated, if the data is not being shared and the results are not being shared with the athlete to guide the practice, we have to move away from stating that we're all about athlete development. So there you go, quick and dirty. If you need any information, qsporthub.com, www.qsporthub.com. It's got all the information, meets you where you are, based on who you are as a sports stakeholder and where you are, new to sport, returning or recreation or high performance. All of this information is in there. If you have any questions, contact us. Enjoy.